All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about method notations in Scala. This is the first of quite a few videos on what we call syntactic sugar. We'll learn what syntactic sugar is in a minute. I'm Daniel, let's get right into this. The first thing that we will learn in this video is that methods with one parameter have a special property in Scala. Take a look at this block of code, where we simulate the class string, which is already pre-written. Take a look at the method contains, which receives a string as a parameter and returns a boolean. The way that we call this method is the standard dot notation, if you take a look at the code on the right hand side. But the same method can also be called in a different way. Like this. Notice the syntax. So the object on which the method is being called, the method name itself, and then the parameter. This thing is called an infix call, and if you take a look at all this syntax, it looks very pretty, much like natural language. So string contains learning. Constructs such as this are called syntactic sugar, which is a prettier way of expressing the same behavior. Scala has a lot of syntactic sugars, and we'll go through them throughout this course. Now, if you take a look at this particular case, the infix notation in Scala is also very commonly referred to as operator call. So these methods act like operators. Speaking of operators, Scala naming is very permissive when it comes to methods. Take a look at this block of code where we define a class rational which you're probably familiar with already, but take a look at the method definition where the name is plus. This is an actually valid method name. With that kind of naming and with infix notation, we can write something like this, for example, where we define two rationals and we obtain a third by just adding the two. Notice in the comments section, the equivalent notation x dot plus with the parameter y, but we'd much rather prefer the infix notation as it's so much more natural. I just want you to take away the fact that all Scala operators are methods, even on primitive types such as int, when you write, for example, two plus three, you actually act on the method plus on the class int. Let's talk now about postfix notation, where, for example, we have the same rational class that you're familiar with, and this time we defined a method is positive, which doesn't receive any parameters, and returns a boolean. The fact that this method doesn't receive any parameters gives it a special property. Take a look at this block of code where we create a rational with some parameters, and we call is positive on the object R. This is all well and known. Or you can just as well call it like this, where you specify the object and the method with a space, not a dot, in between them. This is called a postfix call, and is especially useful when you want to chain multiple operators. Now be very careful when you use the postfix notation. For example, if you have in your class a postfix operator and an infix operator with the same name, the compiler can get confused when you want to chain your operators in big expressions. Also be very careful if your postfix operator has side effects, such as printing to the console or changing a variable. All right, we've talked about infix and postfix operators. Let's now consider this kind of code that we would probably like to write. For example, we would like to create a rational and we would like to negate it. So we would like some kind of syntax that would allow us to specify an operator, such as the minus sign, and then the object. Scala, fortunately, offers this kind of syntax. This is called a prefix call, and Scala allows us to define a unary method which can act as a prefix operator. Take a look at this rational class, and take a look at the unary minus method. It's composed of this unary underscore prefix, which is mandatory, and then the operator. This kind of method definition allows you to use minus as a prefix operator as in the first chunk of code. Now be mindful though, the unary underscore is available only for a few operators. Plus, minus, bang, which is often used for booleans, and the tilde. 
All right, this is pretty cool. We've learned infix, prefix, and postfix notations, which allow us to write very pretty Scala code. I'm Daniel. I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see you soon.